This is Ernie Trinidad for FilmPulse.net. What would you do if you came down with a disease? Like, you were becoming a zombie, and you couldn't convince anyone that you were becoming a undead person? That's the situation that Regina Stevens faces in the film Pretty Dead, and I'm here with the writer and director of that film, Ben Wilkins. Hello. How's it going, Ben? It's going good. Long time. How are you? I know. So um, we all know the zombie and horror genre has pretty much been done to death, and you're tackling zombies and found footage. Uh, what did you want to bring the to the table when you made your film? Well. We really wanted to do something that hadn't been done before. And it seemed like this, the zombie story that was missing was that first zombie story. The one mm -hmm. of the person that kind of starts off the whole shoot him in the head party years later. Kind of like a patient zero. A patient zero, exactly. And um, that story is different from any other zombie story out there because that's the story of a person becoming a monster as opposed to monsters eating people. Mm -hmm. And that is what we set out to do with, with this, is just you know, really get into the humanity and the loss of humanity that goes with that kind of transformation. And then ask, well, okay, what would really happen if you just started being a zombie? Mm -hmm. What would a normal society do? Right. And so we we brought in all the mental illness and institutionalization stuff of, of the story then. From what I understand, you did a lot of research to really ground this in reality, far more than most zombie films, uh, or TV shows for that matter. We did. We really wanted a real zombie. We wanted a scientifically accurate zombie, as opposed to some random virus that magically how does one come to get a scientifically accurate zombie? Is zombieism a normal thing in society? It's, it's not, but there is a number of funguses and um, other bacteria that do affect people's behavior and even more than people, um, insects' behavior. And we found a cordyceps fungus that took over the minds of ants and drove mm -hmm. them to um, do what was best for the fungus. So we created a fungus in our heads that was along those lines that would keep its host alive until its host could get to a position mm -hmm. where it was going to be able to spore the best. And um, that, on so many levels, just works so much better than a virus or something unexplainable happening. Right. Right. I remember seeing that documentary, I can't remember which one it was, but um, that was like one of my favorite pieces. I was like so fascinated with what was going on. And when I saw that is what was behind what was going on in the film, like, yeah. it's almost, this makes sense and could happen. <laughs> well, that's what we wanted. I mean, if you're going to do a found footage movie, you have to try to make it real, because otherwise it just looks silly. Mm -hmm. And we really wanted this fungus to be something that could really happen, and Joe my producing partner and I found this clip of um, Planet, what is it? Planet, Planet Earth, probably. Planet Earth, yeah. Planet Earth um, from the BBC, and there's this great section about ants being attacked by this cordyceps fungus and doing crazy things, and we literally recreated almost frame by frame that mm -hmm. sequence for the movie. I almost with, saw you. With like, a you 12 the actual footage, like, no. Yeah, no, that was the, probably the best of our problem solving. We tried to license the footage. It was going to cost more than the entire movie. So we just went out with a magnifying glass and put it on top of a camera and shot some ants in Joe's backyard. These common black ants, known as Monomoria minimum to etymologists, are one of the most common ant species in the world. over 2,000 workers per queen. But this one here is exhibiting some odd behaviors. It has been infected by a parasitic fungus known as cordyceps. 
This remarkable fungus infects both the body of the host as well as its mind. As the fungus begins to take control, the ants exhibit periods of intense aggression and disorientation until finally the cordyceps wins control of its victim's mind and compels it upwards towards the light of the sun. When it came to casting, did you immediately have um, people in mind or did you just reach out to people you know? I you had an audition process? I had done um, something with Carly before and she wasn't the lead in that, but she was just amazing. And so I always had Carly in the back of my mind. and. As we developed the idea, before we had a script even, we were like, well, whoever is going through this is going to be the movie. Like, if, if this is not cast right, the movie isn't going to work. And I thought Carly could do it, and we gave her the most bizarre screen test in the history of film. I think we told her to think about eating, like, a hamburger and stuff, and then talk about, like, doing something horrible so she would have these things. And it was... It was pretty clear from the beginning that she could do it. When my mom died, um, I, um, I just kept everything in. And eventually, I uh, felt so cold and alone. that I just kind of went numb to everything. Until I, until I met, until I met Ryan. Uh, but then, you know, he started pulling away and I knew it was just, things had gotten too far out of hand. I knew it was too late to get help. Um, so the film is now on VOD. The film is on VOD. And, uh, Watch it. Any plans for a eventual DVD release or a Blu-ray release? Um, yeah, um, all that stuff is in the works. It, the VOD stuff came up. First, that was the first deal that we were able to make, so that's why it got released first that way. I'd like to see it on DVD and Blu-ray. Mm -hmm. I'd like to see it, you know, go outside of the U.S. and Canada. Mm -hmm.